Hey, welcome to the channel, More Dirt, More Distance. On this episode, I'm installing the Amber Rough Country 2-inch cube lights. And the reason why I decided to add this to the Gladiator build is because the hood light bar has been great when I just want light that is going straight forward. But I was having issues if, when I was driving in the dark, uh, specifically doing turns on maybe like switchback roads. Because the issue is when you're driving, you know, the lights are going forward, right? It's, it's going with the front of the vehicle. But when you're getting ready to do those turns into the switchbacks, you're looking over that way to see what's coming as far as where the road's going, is there rocks, uh, where the end of the road is, and you just can't see that because even though your head's turning, the car hasn't come around yet and there just isn't any light there. So it's a little late by the time the light gets there and if, if there was something in the road or if the turn was different than you thought, you're getting a little last minute uh, information as far as what, what, what the conditions are. So with the cube lights, I can angle them out to give a wider view. So when I turn my head to look, uh, it's gonna light up further out wider than what the headlights can do or what that light bar can do. So that's why I decided to add the cube lights. And I didn't have any amber lights and they're supposed to help with dust and and other visibility issues, I figured why not give it a shot. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this installation going and we'll see how it goes. In the box are two cube lights with mounts, wiring harness, and the necessary hardware. I'm going to have to make some modifications, but the wiring harness has two plugs for the lights, a power and ground, and a switch. It is a three position rocker switch, which allows you to select white or amber light. I'm using the factory auxiliary switches, so I won't be using it. The red wire and one of the black grounds power the switch, so I'll just cut those wires off. The wires are connected to the switch with a quick connect, so it is easy to remove them from the switch. The two white wires and black ground power the amber light. The two blue wires and black ground power the white light. I have one available switch, so the plan is to tap the blue wire white light into the hood light bar, so when the light bar is on, the cubes are projecting white light. The white wire, the amber light, will go to my available switch, so I can just turn on the amber lights if I want to. The red wire and black ground aren't necessary since they power the switch, so I cut them off. Now that the wiring is figured out, time to install the lights. You'll need the T40 Torx bit from your Jeep tool kit. The T40 Torx to remove the body panel. There are four bolts connecting it to the Jeep. At first I ran the wire through the opening in the foam into the engine bay, secured with zip ties, but changed my mind and ran it along the back of the foam. I have a lot of wires running in the bay and want to come up with a plan to clean it up, so I just wanted it out of the way for now. Connect the light to the wiring harness and place the light on a towel so you don't scratch the paint. Slide the body panel back into place, but only secure it using the bottom two bolts.
Grab the provided spacer, light bracket, and the 6mm button head bolt and washer. Place the spacer into the rear dimple. Secure the light bracket on the spacer using the bolt and washer. An Allen wrench is included in the hardware. Once the bracket is mounted, the light can be installed. Use these bolts and washers to install the light. If you're finding this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Set the light to the desired angle and tighten the bolts to secure it. Reinstall the factory bolt into the front dimple. The driver's side is done, now repeat on the passenger side. I can't remove the panel on the passenger side because of the snorkel, so I ran the wire a little differently and didn't use the spacer. The auxiliary wire is located in the engine bay next to the battery. I'm connecting the amber light to this switch. I typically use a buck connector, but decided to try a disconnect this time. I twisted the two grounds together and used a ring connector. Now to tap into the light bar wire. I've never done this before but it seems easy enough. Make sure the car battery is disconnected. Then remove the insulation from a small section of the wire that you want to tap into. Now find a tool small enough to create a gap in the exposed wire. I used a small screwdriver. Strip away about an inch or more of the blue wires. Twist them together and slide them into the space in the wire. Then wrap the blue wire around the exposed wire. It is better to cover the exposed wire using heat shrink tubing, but I'm going to clean up all my wiring, so tape will do for now. Attach the female disconnect to the amber light, and now everything should be good to go. This bolt next to the battery is a good place to connect the ground wires. Time to test everything out. The installation wasn't bad at all. The actual mounting of the cube lights was super easy. The only part where it got a little tricky or could be difficult was with the wiring, depending on your particular setup. So you saw with mine, I had to do a wire tap and a few other things to make it fit with the auxiliary switches and what I already had installed on there. So that could be super easy or a little bit more difficult depending on whatever your personal setup is, but still wasn't uh, that bad. I took it out and went out to one of the more um, back roads and it did really what I wanted to as quite a bit of extra light. I angled it out and it really made the field of vision quite a bit wider. So I like the look of it and it's going to do what I want as far as lighting. I turned on the amber lights just to see what it looked like. There wasn't any dust or snow or any rain like that that would, uh, would make my visibility reduced but I still turned it on and it looked good too. It's a nice option to have to flip on if it's uh, dusty and I don't want the full light bar on, but I can put those on, get a little extra light to see through some dust uh, or someone can, can see me if they're ahead of me, uh, know, know that I'm there. So the insulation, not too bad at all. Uh, it's performing 
well, so I'm happy with it. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss my next install.